The first seat belt installed in an American automobile was featured in a Nash model in 1949. But it wasn't the first indication that automobile manufacturers realized that their machines could be hazardous to our health. In 1901, the Oldsmobile rolled out the speedometer and my own state, Connecticut, set the speed limit in cities at 12 miles per hour. Perhaps that was in response to the first highly publicized death of a pedestrian, Henry Bliss, at the hands of a New York cabbie two years earlier. There would be other advances over the next 50 years, like the three-color backlights in 1920 and padded dashboards and seatbacks in 1937. But the largest breakthrough came in 1949, when a Volvo engineer, Niles Bolin, modified an airplane device to create a three-point seatbelt. A simple design, but ingenious, with a strap across the hips and another across the chest anchored together at the same point on the floor. Fourteen years later, the advance made it to America not exactly with wide support. Manufacturers were concerned that it would reinforce public safety concerns about the auto in general, and Americans wanted to feel free and unencumbered. In 1968, the federal government first weighed in requiring that all passenger cars be equipped with seatbelts. But six years later, with the government poised to require that autos be engineered to not start unless seatbelts were engaged, the public, with support of industry, told Congress to lay off, and they did. A decade later, New York became the first state to require seatbelt use. Of course, requiring is not the same as enforcing. In fact, a study in 1981 showed that just one in 10 Americans were buckling up. Where are we today? Well, all states except New Hampshire have seatbelt laws. Dual front airbags have been required since 1998, and a national click it or ticket campaign has boosted usage to 83% in 2008. Most importantly, auto deaths adjusted for population changes have declined by over 35% in the past 30 years. What would engineer Niles Bolin think about his invention and its impact on Americans today? Certainly, he would be rightly proud that his invention has saved millions of lives over the years. But he would likely be saddened and somewhat mystified by how long it takes Americans to get their act together, even when our own families' lives are at risk. What we are willing to tolerate in the name of personal freedom, whether it be seat belts or one-sixth of our population lacking access to affordable health care, boggles the imagination. Our laws and our government, though slow to act, historically have protected us from ourselves, especially when it comes to health and safety. We need to trust government more. For Health Commentary, I'm Mike McGee.